My name is Joseph Lomax, L-O-M-A-X, Principal Environmental Co Consultant with the Lomax Consulting Group in Cape May Courthouse. I've been an environmental consultant for 33 years and submitted many hundreds of applications to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection under the uh, Coastal Zone Management Program as well as uh, the wetlands programs. The Friends of the Wetlands, OC, NJ, LLC, uh, retained me to review the application and plans and also to evaluate uh, the environment within which the project is proposed. I myself spent more than 30 hours on site. Uh, my staff has spent about 50 hours in addition to that on site um, investigating the environmental conditions there. I have prepared a report uh, and also would just like to take a few minutes to review the highlights. Uh, the project cannot be deemed complete as it's currently been submitted because the applicant has failed to address the following special areas. Wetlands, wetlands buffers, shellfish habitat, submerged vegetation habitat, intertidal and subtidal tidal shallows, flood hazard areas, endangered and threatened wildlife plant and species habitat, and also critical wildlife habitat. In addition to that, the applicant has failed to demonstrate consistency with recreational docks and piers rule, the basic location rule, secondary impacts rule, water quality rule, the public trust rights rule, and finally the buffers and compatibility of use rules. Now I'm not going to review all of these in detail, however I would just like to uh, highlight a couple of these areas. Certainly the shellfish rule and the submerged vegetation rule revolves around uh, the protection of the area within which the dock is proposed. Um, and there's been no documentation to date as to whether there would be an impact on those resources in addition to the intertidal and subtidal shallows. Uh, the area is designated as Flood Hazard Zone A7. And the Flood Hazard Act regulates the activity in these areas. The applicant has not demonstrated how the project complies uh, with the Flood Hazard Act as required by your rules. The site contains adjacent coastal wetlands, mapped coastal wetlands. However, the applicant has not represented that uh, there is substantial unmapped coastal wetlands or area, uh, areas of wetlands regulated under the Freshwater Wetlands Program between those coastal wetlands and the proposed project. And if you uh, refer to figure one in our report, uh, it is our best estimate uh, based on some preliminary field investigations as to the extent of those unmapped coastal wetlands um, and the impact that this project could have on those uh, unmapped coastal wetlands. No application has been made um, under the Freshwater Wetlands Program to deal with this important resource. It appears as though uh, fresh fill has been placed um, in a couple of areas within the road um, or, or adjacent to the road, uh, extending into those unmapped coastal wetlands. So at the present time, I do believe that there are pending violations that will have to be resolved before this application uh, could be deemed complete and reviewed further. Uh, development in wetlands is prohibited unless the development is found to be acceptable under the Freshwater Wetlands uh, Protection Act and associated regulations in this particular case because these are the wetlands that are immediately adjacent to the project. The road is, in almost all cases, less than 12 feet wide uh, between the railroad bed and uh, the existing wetlands. The plan clearly states, um, and the application clearly states, that the trail will be 12 feet wide. Therefore, uh, in many cases along the proposed route, this proposed project is going to extend into unmapped coastal wetlands and will have to result in the destruction of unmapped coastal wetlands, vegetation, and uh, habitat conditions. And it has not been demonstrated that it will have minimum uh, feasible alteration or impairment of tidal circulation uh, or also in the natural contours and vegetation of the wetlands. In addition, the, uh, in terms of the, the wetlands buffers, clearly the Freshwater Wetlands Program requires that if there are exceptional resource value wetlands because they're threatened endangered species, 
that rely on these uh, habitats, the buffers are 150 feet, so the entire site would be covered by uh, the 150 foot buffers and no application has been made to assess whether um, or how the project will deal with uh, this intrusion into the buffers. This area is patch rank four emergent wetlands under the, the um, landscape project and therefore is, is of issue and concern uh, regarding the buffers. Uh, from a critical wildlife point of view, we did clearly find that virtually all of those species have been observed on site and using the adjoining wetlands uh, and the ditches adjacent to the proposed bike path. The most surprising omission in the application is that this site um, is truly a critical wildlife habitat for the diamondback curve. And figure two gives you uh, GPS readings on or locations of 33 turtle nests uh, that were located along the road, uh, the full extension of the road all the way to the eastern end of the road. Um, so, and they were the 33 nests we could find. We're quite certain that uh, there may be two to three times that many nests that, uh, that are in that, that area and could be impacted uh, by the project. There is a real concern about the proposal to regrade the road. There is a very clear indication that uh, rail lines are the source of very significant contaminants and the regrading, uh, the redevelopment that, of that area could release um, a wide range of contaminants into the coastal area, um, natural resources, the wetlands and associated water areas. There are now preliminary assessments and site, in, site investigations that have very specific protocols and it's very, um, it would be very surprising if the phase one and phase two would meet current standards for those evaluations. And especially because of the close proximity and the extent of potential uh, exposure of the wetlands and adjoining aquatic environments, uh, it is really incumbent upon the applicant uh, to uh, provide adequate data. Uh, also, this site is located on the Historic fill maps of DEP, they are included as figure three, and if you could um, review them, you would certainly see that uh, there is a concern with historic fill areas and pollutants that are associated with them. The location rule has some serious problems. I would just like to mention that in terms of secondary impacts, we know there's going to be an increase in traffic, parking, and transient use of the residential neighborhoods. No parking. Uh, is, is suggested no plan has been um, laid out in the application as to how this increased traffic and this tourist attraction would impact the residential areas, the 51st Street and 52nd Street. Um, Richard indicated that these are C1 waters uh, adjacent to the project and um, please take note of my comments here, I won't um, reiterate that. Uh, it is very important to note that this change in use really flies in the face of the new public trust rights doctrine and uh, rule. And if you would please review my document in that regard, um, this will really change public use, limit its use, and restrict a lot of young families, um, small boaters, that practically speaking, uh, closing off this road will prevent them uh, to gain access to the waterway of Crookland Creek. And in ending, the plants have some serious difficulties because they don't represent the extent of fill as it relates to the environmentally sensitive areas. And finally, I do want to reiterate what Richard had indicated. The applicant has failed to prepare an alternatives analysis to demonstrate that the project is designed in an environmentally sensitive manner. And it's, um, I think it's critically important to go through this evaluation process in order to have um, a clear understanding of the alternatives. Thank you.